The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. With Naughty is brought to you by BTC, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, Fine Threads, John's Department Store, Chokers Wild, KFC, Naughty Journeys, Percy's Island Games, Rise Bahamas, Tropical Gyros, and the Water and Sewage Corporation. Ah, uh, yeah, the Tuesday, March 28th edition of Talking Heads is on and popping your boy Naughty in your company right up until 6 p.m. And, uh, you know, it's a Tuesday edition, so we're going to get it in and get it on and make sure we get you in a good space and a good place to have this good conversation because we got lots to talk about. My God, we got lots to talk about. So uh, let's get it out of the way. Phone lines are open 323 6232 325 4316. Three two five four two five nine. Tax lines powered by BTC four two two GR nine six. That's two four seven nine six. Stream us live. Take us wherever you want to go. GuardianTalkRadio.com. That's GuardianTalkRadio.com. Cable channel nine six nine. BTC flow channel six one two. That's how you get it in. That's how you get it on. All right. And uh. You know what we're playing for, of course. Dunkin' Donuts coupons, KFC coupons, Joker's Wild Party Passes. All right? All right, here we go. Listen, this, 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 this. Oh, my goodness. My Bahamian people. Recent survey. All right, I want, when you think of this one now, I want you to think in the kitchen. Okay? And maybe outside the kitchen as well. It could be, you, you could probably, you, you could find it done in the kitchen and outside of the kitchen as well. All right, here we go. And that's your hint, because I don't want you all to freak yourself out. All right. Recent survey of 100 Bahamians. Recent survey of 100 Bahamians, 50 men, 50 women, between the ages of 21 and 50. The survey revealed that 17% have admitted to recycle in this. What is it? That's your mind bending brain teaser. You got between now and the news in the top of the five o'clock hour to get your answers in. And I gave you a hint. And they're off. And while you guys work on that, I'm gonna work on this. The headliners. Who wants to make headlines and it's all brought to you by Fine Threads. Be sure to check out Fine Threads online, finethreads.com. You can check out all their new arrivals. And then do your shopping online. All you have to do right after that is arrange for pickup at any one of those convenient fine thread locations. Top of the Hill, Mackey Street, the flagship store, and the Southwest Shopping Plaza. Both those locations are available for you Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And remember I tell you, finethreads.com. All right, here we go. Here's what's blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian News and Views in Madison's 1844. And don't forget, it's Tuesday. So be sure to check out the supplement, the Grand Bahama News, in today's Guardian, as it is each and every Tuesday. Chief Justice warns on citizenship delay. Sir Ian says delaying approvals for those entitled a recipe for social discontent. Story by Kendia Dames, executive editor. Requiring individuals born in the Bahamas to foreign parents who are essentially Bahamians in waiting to live on the outside of their own society is a recipe for social disconnect which the Bahamas can hardly afford. Chief Justice Sir Ian Winder has warned, there is absolute justification why these applications ought to take years, and in some cases decades, to be processed, Sir Ian said. Such interactions leave a bitter taste and often hinder these Bahamians from fully embracing their Bahamian identity when their applications are eventually approved. Very interesting. And if you look at where we are right now, we're starting to see a disconnect and a discontent. Obviously, you've got other mitigating factors. But this is one that it stems from. We've got 
The grandmama? Okay, good. So we got to keep an eye on where this is going. And remember, this all relates to Article 7. And so Ian, you know, brings up a great point. Perhaps the most challenging immigration and citizenship issue relates to those individuals affected by Article 7 of the Bahamian Constitution, which speaks to a person born in the Bahamas after July 9th, 1973, neither of whose parents is a citizen of the Bahamas. And of course, you know, that act encourages that a person is entitled upon um, making an application on his attending the age of 18 years or within 12 months thereafter is in a such manner as may be prescribed to be registered as a citizen of the Bahamas. So we see that this is, you know, if we can deal with some of the loopholes that we have, especially with the, you know, with our laws and our constitutions and what we plan to do moving forward, we need to, to, to address some of these things. If we can eliminate them, that might eliminate some of these systemic problems that we've had for years moving forward. Government settles with prison officials who filed suit. Destroyed by Travis Cartwright Carroll. Government signs new contract with BPU. Destroyed by Jared Higgs, assistant broadcast editor. BPSU had threatens action over failed PHA hazard pay. So I'm telling you, I mean, lots to read about, especially if you're affiliated with the unions. Very interesting. <laughs> Let's check out uh, the text lines real quick. No, not a milk container. We all got a lot of answers, though. Jesus, Lord. Whoever said Ziploc bags? No, wrong. Nope. Let me, let me see who does this. Mm -mm. No, sir. No, sir. Nope. None of you are right so far. Incorrect. Incorrect, incorrect, my God. All right. And I think I found a winner. This person sent me eight answers, and one in eight is correct. And I know how this thing go. As soon as I was checking out my winner, I had another person text me. At the same time, so I'm going to make you a winner also. You two, I just texted back. Send me your information, please. You're my winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, Naughty, I was on the phone the boss could, with the boss. Could you repeat this? No. You need to tell the boss he need to call you at a different time because you're listening to me on the radio. You get your boss straight, okay? And then second of all, I, I can't give you the question again because we got a winner. You got to try me again tomorrow. Can't repeat the trivia. We got a winner already. All right? The correct answer was foil. Foil, aluminum foil, tin foil, or furl in some cases. All right, now, let me see. Okay. Tax, let me see. Naughty, how much was the settlement? All right. Uh, da, da, da. The Office of the Attorney General has settled a lawsuit with Acting Commissioner of Correction, Doan Clare, and Department of Correction, uh, Our Deputy Commissioner of Corrections, Bernadette Thompson Murray, Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, confirmed last night. I'm advised by the matter was settled by the Office of the Attorney General. This is according to Monroe. The pair were represented by Monroe and Associates who saw the Supreme Court order squashing. Now let me get to page seven. White text, you got me reading. You could have just grabbed the Guardian and read it yourself, you know. But anyway, um, da 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 the lawsuit was brought under the Minnis administration. Um, but no, th there's no mention of, of the damages with the figure was, all right? So when I find that out, I'll let you know, okay? All right? Yeah.
Now, that being said, let's go to Freeport. As you know, each and every Tuesday, we got the uh, supplement, the Grand Bahama News. Let's check in with Sarah Kirkby, chiming in from Freeport right now from Grand Bahama. What's going on, Sarah? Hey, dude, I'm great. How are you? I am good. <laughs> What's going on in, in, in Grand Bahama? A little bit of half power at my office. I must have put um, a little bit of jinx on myself. Hey, y'all just be bragging so much. That's good for you. To burn some lamp and some, some <laughs> candles and sweat a little bit. Yes. <laughs> I got my payback. <laughs> there you go. Anyhow, we are looking good. We had a big concern up here in Grand Bahama over the Carnival Port. Um, everyone's very excited about it, but they also want to make sure, uh, you know, that everything's going right. Um, so um, Barbara Watkins has gone out. She went out with Watkins, sorry, went out with the Save the Bays and Waterkeepers team. They did a survey of the workout there. Um, I actually went with them and saw the land that's being taken from the fill that's coming from the um, from uh, deep, deep down in the ocean as they dig this deep harbor for their ships to come in. It's being pumped on land. They're building it 12 to 14 feet high to be safe because of the hurricanes. So uh, that's all going on. And um, we also know that the BNT and DEP are going to be going out there, double checking on the coral replant. So that's our main lead story for today. And and then unfortunately, I think as you guys did in Nassau, we had a very horrible dog attack. I saw a sad situation. You know, I hate to see that. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, I do actually know uh, the owner of two of the dogs. They were put down um, and he was devastated for his dogs, but also devastated about what happened. Um, he does not let his dogs out of the yard. So unfortunately, they got out and um, they met up with some other dogs, which they have not found yet. And they viciously attacked this lady and it is not good. Ugh. And the story of the young man who has seen it has been was quite upsetting. So, um, you know, you want everyone to exercise and be good, but you've also got to listen to what Tip says about having your dog socialized so that these things don't happen. So that was a bit of an upsetting story for us, but one that we wanted to make sure people were aware of and being careful out there, you know? And continue to secure your property as well. Just invest in a good yeah. paddock. If that's the worst investment you have to make, if you invest so much in, in your animals and you don't want them to get out, secure the property. Because you know yeah. you have some bad mind people who open the gate for other nefarious, you know, purposes. You know, yeah. let the dogs out so I can try to break in your yard or so on and so forth. So I get it, but you, know, you got to make sure they're secure, like you said. And if you can get them accustomed to, to interacting and, and socializing with other dogs, and you know, then that's a, that's a plus too, because you, you want them to be able to interact. You don't want it to be always an issue when you take them out. No. Yeah, you do. You have to be very. It's a whole process, but you know. It, and, but it was terrifying for the lady, and 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 terrifying also for the people who saw that. But I will give kudos to the gentleman who um, whose dog it was. He did go to the hospital. Uh, he went to go and, and make sure everything was all right. And, you know, he had to, he was trying for the what happened with the dog. So there is a, you know, bigger story here as well. There are rules and regulations right. for your dogs and you are responsible for them. So that's something we have to be aware of. Um, I'm going to switch to a line, much more lighthearted story. Right. <laughs> um, it was the debut of Art Lukaya here in Grand Bahama, which were uh, actually three days of a, four days of events. Um they had a Thursday evening, a Friday night, a Saturday event, and Sunday, which, which was the children's art. So you'll see some of the photos um, in the paper today. If you want to see more, you can go on to 242 News Bahamas. We have all of our um, reporters' photos up so you can see uh, the amazing artwork that was out there. There's this gorgeous one that um, Matthew Wild Goose did with this amazing arm and just some of the work is really beautiful. And so it was great. They also unveiled some statues. And so it was a really big weekend of activities. And the former governor general was here and enjoyed it and was part of the celebrations as well. So I'd like you to have a look at that. And had um, a 50th speech competition we talked about. And <laughs> speaking of dogs, there's mine. <laughs> and then also we have a quick roundup in the paper. And we have a story about a tree planting as well by the environmental minister who will actually be coming back to Grand Bahama to visit some of the issues and, and worries that um, uh, that Joseph Darville has. And he's promised to come back and visit Grand Bahama 
to check on everything. So these are all good things. When he's supposed to come back, he promised, but did he give a date in the promise or he just promised to come back? I actually don't know. Because you know, you know, Joe I, Darwin is, 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 is my Uncle Joe right there. That's my, that's my, that's my big brother in, in, in a lot of this environmental game and so on and so yeah. forth. So, Joe seemed very positive that they were working on it. And it was, I want to say it was in a couple of weeks, he wanted him to go look at the mangroves down there by where by the um, carnival site. And they were also going to go and look, obviously, at the oil concerns down at uh, the former um, oil refinery down in the east. It's got a new owner, and I just cannot think of the name. And there are a lot of concerns whether the oil did get cleaned up properly there, and that was supposed to be done before the sale. So that's what I know um, Mr. Darville will be checking on. All right. So All right. I got a question for you. Okay, what you got? Um, Naughty asked Sarah if that huge cut in the land, what looks like a waterway carnival is creating, is not of huge concern, or am I looking at the image wrong? You are not looking at the image wrong. This, unfortunately, though, is an old drawing. We have understood that Carnival may have scrapped that idea of cutting into there, and they are only doing the large uh, dredging for the two ships to come in. I think it would look similar if you've ever been on a cruise to Cozumel. I think Cozumel has that same... Uh, peer out, and then the ships will come in. Um, we have asked them for a new rendering. Um, they said they're getting it to us as soon as possible, but I do understand the worry about that, and I understand that is changing. All right. And we will update everybody when we know the full um, the full scheme of it. So, yeah, it, it was a concern as well for me, but it's all part of the environmental. Thing. I don't know. Nadia, maybe you can help me here. With these EIAs that come out for all these various projects, are they public knowledge for us now? Are they all falling under this, you know, do we have full disclosure yet? Are we at that? I don't think we're there yet. No. No. Yeah. We need That's to get there. We got a long way to go. Yeah. But, I mean, I had it, it went through and it just wasn't passed in the last uh, last government. Freedom of Information Act, Of correct? course, nothing. We're still waiting on that. Last previous administration, this administration promised it on the election trail, the campaign trail, nothing. Squadoosh, zilch, nada, zero. They only want us to know what they feed us, Sarah. They don't want us to have a proper Freedom of Information Act with, with teeth. That leads to accountability and transparency. Kryptonite they were set, to politicians they were setting, worldwide. They were setting something up, though, for that, right? So this is something we, we definitely all need to push for because we do need to see that, especially with NASA's big concerns over the RCI project and also our concerns over here with Carnival, these should be public documents for everybody to see. It was the same issue I know that we had with the dock that they built when the EIA had literally said, do not build the um, the dockage where, where it was built. It said there were 10 dive sites and fishing coral heads there that shouldn't have gone on. More. It is my it is my concern. I I, I you agree gotta keep with you an on eye on that. Yeah. But uh, please do, please th do. Thanks for chiming in as always. Thank you, thank and you. And I hope you get the full power in short order. <laughs> I will make sure you know about that. All right, there you go. Thanks, we'll talk Sean. to you Have next Tuesday, man. You too. Be safe. All right, All Mr. Producer, right. let's get to the break. We'll take the first break now. Flip side of the break, we'll pick it up and we'll continue the Tuesday, March twenty eighth edition of Talking Heads, which continues right after this. Texas, I get to your text right after the break. Easter is right around the corner and the NASA Guardian is partnering with the Easter Bunny to give something special to you. Would you like to give your child an Easter basket filled to the brim with chocolate bunnies, surprise eggs, gift certificates, and more? Then you should enter your child into the NASA Guardian's Easter Coloring Contest. There are three different categories, 5 to 6, 7 to 9, 13. Deadline for entry is Monday, April 3rd at 4 p.m. Purchase your copy of the NASA Guardian to get your Easter Coloring Contest sign-up form. I'll let your children color away and win one of three baskets filled to the brim with Easter goodies from the NASA Guardian. The NASA Guardian's Easter Coloring Contest. For more information, call 302-2370. Well done, Easter Bunnies. Good job. Vaccines protect those we love the most. Our children and our grandchildren. I vaccinated my children to protect them. Getting your child immunized can protect them against diseases like polio, measles, whooping cough, and others. So protect your child today by getting them immunized. My grandchildren 
are vaccinated. You should do the same. Vaccinate your children and your grandchildren and make sure they are safe. Take advantage of the National Vaccination Catch-Up Campaign, March 25th to April 6th. Visit your nearest clinic weekdays between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. On Saturday, March 25th, visit us at the Red Cross. And on Saturday, April 1st, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you'll be at the Mall at Marathon. COVID-19 vaccines are also available at all locations. This message is brought to you by Paco WHO, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and USA. Original or hot and spicy? Feeling original? Think twice. Here's some precise advice. Always add the spice. <laughs> Hey, that's great. Take your time, brother. I don't want you to run too far out with your spicy self. Oh, yeah? Yeah, mouth hot, but you still ain't got the right flavor. Listen, just like the colonel, I'm an original. You? There's a spicy come lately. You think so? Original. You could never. There's no winning flavor. They're all finger-licking good. Only at KFC Nassau. George, shoes and accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy style. We cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online www.johnshoes on our carry small home appliances so come on in today at john's where we put fashion at your feet get your carifta tickets the 50th carifta games is coming april 7th to april 10th tickets are on sale now online at carifta50.com or at the thomas a robertson national stadium western grand entrance for more details, email tickets at carifta50.com or call 605-4051. When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together. And we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey for every infusion and follow-up, for every step of the way, for every care in the world. Cleveland Clinic in Florida. Get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative, visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Tired of paying too many bills and loan payments each month? Debt payments down to one easy payment with our debt consolidation loan. It also has a built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Inquire about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Hazelnut meets mocha with the new Dunkin' Hazelnut Mocha Signature Latte. Savor the delicious coffee combination of smooth, rich espresso with silky chocolate and toasted hazelnut flavors. All topped with whipped cream, chocolate powder. Available hot or iced, the Dunkin' Mocha Latte is the perfect pick-me-up at any time of day. So why wait? Head to your favorite Dunkin' and enjoy the Dunkin' Hazelnut Mocha taste sensation today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. The Tuesday, March 28th edition of Talking Heads continues right now. And uh, we take care of the, uh, call the, uh, the free part portion of the buzz. And, of course, now we'll take care of the New Providence portion of the buzz, all brought to you, across by John Shoes. And don't forget, full uh, selection, new arrivals in stock right now, and full selection, men, women's, and children's footwear, athletic, formal, casual. Ladies, you got your slippers and your flip-flops, too. Yeah, and your sandals and your pumps and your wedges and all that good stuff. Be sure to check them out. And don't forget they got our small home appliances and cookware available for you now as well at John's Shoes. So be sure to check them out, both locations, John's Plaza, Carmichael, and the flagship store over there on Rosetta. All right, be sure to check them out today. And remember, John, serving you is a pleasure. So let me check uh, the local. The Minister of National Security won a settlement from the same Bahamas government. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I, I, yeah, you all did notice that too, eh? Mr. Producer, you see that too? He? <laughs> he represented the clients prior to him being posted, and now he's been posted, and his law firm still represented. And, and it's business as usual. I, I, like I say, y'all, y'all astute though. I won't lie to you. I thought it was just me. Um, Naughty, what damages? 
was the commissioner of the prison paid when he was still employed and didn't lose any benefits. The same goes for the prime minister's best friend, commissioner of police, Clayton Fernanda and crew. Looks like you all need, look like all you need is a PLP lawyer and your matter is fast tracked. People have been waiting on government settlements for years, but this administration looking out for all of that people. I, I, again, would want to know, and, and then see, inquire minds want to know, like, like voters and citizens, because we end up footing the bill. So it's all money. So we should be able to ask, well, who got what and what got who? But I guess when you ask too many questions, it's a problem. But yeah, you're scratching your head the same way I scratch in mine. But uh, continuing uh, the New Providence buzz, more talk today, you know, on the shanty towns. And, um, you know, again, there's still more talks, but obviously, you know, we had an impasse again. You know? So no need to talk. Now we need to bait again and be ready to proceed whenever something else comes down the pike. Naughty, how is it that there are not at least 100 great creative excursions for cruise guests on Grand Bahama and Nassau? I see a video circuit now start for cruise. I saw, I saw that foolishness too. And what amazes me is they let any foreign entity come in here with a camera, film, whatever, don't know what they're going to produce, recreate, uh, submit to the world. And that's all good. Bahamians try to film in front of their own historical sites like forts and so on and so forth, and you got wardens and, you know, tour guides coming out saying you can't do that. You got to pay a price. You got to get a permit and all this foolishness. But we don't have any idea what goes out. And then it's already out. Now, thank God for the hashtag CYC crew that's on social media that will catch idiots like that and go after them and savage them and troll them and all. But at the end of the day, you want me to be real? We need to pick up our game. We need to ensure that outside of the private islands that all of these uh, cruise ship passengers go to, which, which makes the, the numbers of visitors yearly look great, but where are they really visiting? Private islands that are run by the cruise ships and their staff are employed. The Haymans out are minimal. So what we need to do is maximize the potential and make sure that Bay Street is a product that they want to go and see. There are cultural tours, historical tours, social tours. You know, get them out there. If you want to get them wilding out and carrying on by, get them out to the Tiki Yellow, wherever they need to go. Also have sea excursions. You know, but put Bahamians in the game. Because, Texter, here's a good question for you. You can't come up with excursions. I'll tell you why. How many tour companies do we have? But how many tour companies have a legitimate foot in the game? A legitimate stake in the game? I'm here only one tour company works at, at one of the major resorts, allegedly. And there are no other Bahamian uh, entities in there. God forbid if it's two. Now you see a problem, correct? We do have the product. But the level, the, the playing field is not level. For a lot of the monopolies and fiefdoms going on. But we do need to pick up our game, bottom line. And if that means allowing Bahamians to get in at a lower rate to become entrepreneurs and investors and venture capitalists to revitalize Bay Street, then let's do it. You got to look what's going on. You got the cruise ship uh, 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 a revitalization project going on. It's starting to take shape and it's starting to look good. But look who's going to be on Main Strip. The same old boys. The same old gang. The same old crew. But you know it's going to go dormant? Old Bay Street. Which came like Fremont Street in Las Vegas. When the Main Strip opened up. Now is a golden opportunity to revitalize Old Bay Street. With restaurants. Bars, clubs, boutiques, shops. See where I'm going with it? Jewelry stores. Run it 24 hours like Fremont Street. 
it never sleeps. One. And I bet you those cruise ship passengers will venture across later on during their stay because they want to see what's going on on the old Bay Street with live shows and anything. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Y'all could pick me up and consult me whenever you want, you know. If this administration wants to, I'm available as a consultant to the Ministry of Tourism. But I'm still keeping my radio show. No muscles involved, yeah. So. Because <laughs> I do want to help country and I got a lot of good ideas, but I can give them to you for free. But if you try to do a thing, that don't mean I can go quiet like some other. Yeah, not I. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, check a few of these texts out. Is the Murphy settlement the one they let go? Oops, he went against the grain. No money for you. P -P oh. <laughs> you all on a roll today, boy. People were blinded by their hate for minutes and voted in this gangster cult of a... Sucking my teeth. That's good for all of y'all who cry it. How do you really feel, Texture? Yes, Naughty, I agree. We need to pick up our game. And we have to stop all these taxi drivers and agents harassing tourists to buy something as soon as they walk off the ship. It's scary and intimidating. We need to be organized and professional. Well, listen, you can could, you could tell. You can tell who the veteran cab drivers in the industry are, and you can tell the new set who got uh, one or two of theirs in the new flood that came out under this new administration when they was giving out like candy, like water in the desert. Caller, I see. I'm coming to you right now. Naughty, I agree. Baby, we need to redo Bay Street and have you on the 24-hour restaurant. No, Cuban really didn't get reported. He was on yesterday. As a matter of fact, when we go to the break, he'll probably be right out of the break taking us to the news. So Cuban ain't going nowhere, but let's get to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, hello, Naughty. What's happening, my brother? Well, hey, right there, man. I listen to you, but I, you know, I didn't call... At least I get to when I go. Come on. Baby, I'm on. Everything good, you know. You know, you know, you know, Boston getting ready to try win this championship. Oh, Lord. You know, you can be to 5 o'clock to talk about foolishness. <laughs> well, anyhow, I already called you. I heard the command by, by the Chief Justice, right? Uh-huh. What he said about the citizenship and we must give out this. But how come he can't command on those other issues which we have? I... I guess he's commented on the issue that he would directly, you know, spoke on and wrote to. Ah. Uh, and the rest is sub judice, so I guess he's just leaving them before the courts, as, you know. Yeah, as, but, you as, know, as, he did as, as, as the protocol. Over, we should give out, you know, citizenship and this and that. But we have, we have a constitution that says you have the right to apply. Right, Article 7. Right, that's why you have the right to apply. It ain't nothing to say guarantee. Right. So I just want, I sometimes I wonder where we be coming from. Because if that's the case, when the immigrant or whatever have the baby, you might as well give them citizenship right away. Now, uh, that's the, the, the proponent that a lot of people some, some want it removed. You're right, they say you have the right to apply. They say nothing automatic when you turn 18. Right. You have the right to apply. And that's what that means. They could give it to you or they could, you know, they have to Not give it, give it to you. To you. And, and that's what we need to get in our head. I don't think nothing, like I said, was automatic. <laughs> and, you know, you might as well, you know, let, let it be automatic. But then that's what I'm saying. All is, all is easy grounds of people, where they breaking the law, squatting on land, building this, all kind of foolishness. I, you know, I am, you know, you can say nothing about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, they're very um, selective on what they speak to. Yeah, but, I mean... <laughs> it's better he could speak on that because really they have broken the law. And well, when it comes to the law, shouldn't we be hearing from the Attorney General who has been like mums the word for the like, last three months? Can't hear or see him at all? Yeah, but... Not even a smoke signal, a smoke stream, not even sign language, not a flare, not nothing? Yeah. But he did spoke on the Shanty Town issue. I think he, he did say something about that. But my point is the time that it is take to do things, man, or he does. They let him get Again, and, and acting on it are two different things. Yeah, and then another thing, things were in the Constitution. You cannot change that. Just, okay, I don't like Naughty Well. I go, 
we have to go to the poll to vote for that. You see? So I I I I, I wonder where it's be coming from. You know, the Constitution got article in it that the the Bahamian man cannot give automatic citizenship. That's in the Constitution. So in order for that to change, I mean, if I interpret it, you have to go vote for that. Yep. And and it needs to be a part of, you know, the, the public has to be a part of the process. Right. You got to just jump up, oh, go in Parliament like how they did with the number when we vote no. <laughs> they go there. Boy, I tell you. Well, man, you ran on the money on that. All right, no. Gordon. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. I got to get to the break. But, yeah, you're making plenty of sense as always, man. Don't be a stranger, man. If you get through the measure, you're going to call them. I call them. I just call them. I just call them. I just call them. I just run on and, you know, they don't. Hey, man. Hey, it is what it is. You know, some of them, that's the. Yeah. We, we got to keep them going sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, my brother. Be safe, all right? Yeah, buddy. All right, Mr. Producer. Let's get to the second break. On flip side of the break, uh, we'll have uh, Cuban Willie's. Uh, Numerical numerology report, all brought to you, of course, by the Island Game. Then we get you to the news. And, of course, uh, we do have a winner. Congratulations to the two winners. The correct answer was the recycle, recycle tin foil. You all totally should have really got that because you all know you all be re- recycling foil or fur. Like how some of you all like, oh, bring the fur. You all get the fur and the plate? Okay, let's go. We'll be back at you right after the break. Experience a flavor explosion with the new Italian mozzarella chicken sandwich from Dunkin'. Loaded with juicy chicken, marinara sauce, a generous drizzle of pesto sauce, all topped off with melted cheese and served on a warm, flaky croissant. Made to order all day long, the Dunkin' Italian mozzarella chicken sandwich combo includes a bag of baked lays and a freshly brewed iced tea. Enjoy a taste of Italy in every bite. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Refined style with elegant taste. The fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you wanna look suave and never there everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Wanna step out and look great? Then fine threads is your place. Refined style with elegant taste. Then fine threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place. People, what you thinking? We want something different. Uh-huh. People, what you wanting? We want up the government. Hello. I can tell them no more slunking. Just I can tell them no more jokes. <laughs> I forgot. Going down Blue Hill Road. Going down Village Road. Going down Nassau Road. We want local government. We want local government. We want local government. We want local government. We, want local government. we are called for local government. Sign the petition and find out more information at risebahamas.net. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there were no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number. They see you as a part of family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. The ultimate sandwich experience starts with a bite of the KFC barbecue glazed zinger and a flavor explosion of crispy, juicy, 100% premium white meat spicy filet, KFC barbecue sauce, lettuce, cheese, and smoky bacon on a toasted brioche bun. The perfect balance of heat and sweet. You won't be able to resist the KFC barbecue glazed zinger. Made by the fried chicken sandwich experts, the KFC barbecue glazed zinger is available for a limited time. Try one today. KFC, it's finger licking good. Huepa, buenas tardes, good afternoon. Soy yo, Cuban Willie, and listen today, I have to make it short because, you know, I have to take care of the farming, I have to go and do some clippings, so I have to make it quick today, okay? Pero mira, 
The Island Game is giving you a numerology report right now, a free ball of the day, and be sure to check out theislandgame.com, see all the place to, to win. And remember, the Island Game always reminds you to play responsibly, okay? So, Mira, today, listen to me, man. Today, I'm doing good. I only have three brown bottles, three brown bottles. The first number is, is three. This is my second day back, second day in the casa, in the house. So, the second number is two. So, it's three. Two, okay, and I find out that four players defected from the Q1 team at the World Baseball Classic. So the third number is four. And good luck to them. Stay running, my friends. So the number today is three, two, four, tres, dos, cuatro. Three to four. That's your three ball of the day. Play it and win with the Island Game. And always play responsibly. Until tomorrow, stay playing, my friends, with the Island Game. Play with Island Games. We making dreams come true. Play with Island Games. We paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market. You get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games. we put in Bahamian's voice. Guaranteed to play Island Games. We like them mother jokers. We've been here from the start. From the bike to computer. Island Games. We can make your dreams come true. We playing with Island Games. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. All right, we're back at you on the Tuesday, March 28th edition of Talking Heads. You guys truly in your company right up until 6 p.m. You know, we talk sports in the 5 o'clock hour, but let me take this call right here. Make sure I get everybody out of the way from the 4 o'clock hour. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hi, Naughty. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, boy, I've been trying to get you from last month. I need to talk to you in private before I, uh, you know, go on and talk to you. All right. Can you call me back when you get off? Yeah, man, get all the info to my producer, and I'll give you a buzz, all right? Okay, uh, put me on to him, please. Yeah, man, there you go, boom. All right. So, we got that out of the way, Mr. Producer. All right, thanks. So, we're into the 5 o'clock hour, and we got a special situation here today. Normally, you know, we kick it off at the Dance Sports History, brought to you by Naughty Johnny's, but I'm going to accelerate the process a little bit, get right into the home court, all brought to you, of course, by Burger King Nassau. Got special guests in the studio, got President... Of the B-Triple-A, Mr. Jerico Watcher, and of course our very own sports editor here at the, the Guardian, Mr. Sheldon Longley. And y'all got uh, big announcements today, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and honored that y'all would, you know, make an appearance here and let the nation know who is representing them in, in the, uh, in the Carifta Games. <laughs> and a very special Carifta game. I thought your name was going to be on the list. No, no, no. I, I retired. You, you was killing like you could run and you could run. No, you don't have a run your mouth category. So you put that oh, in there, man, I get in gold. Don't worry about that. <laughs> now, at, at this stage, I could, I could run, you know, in a golf cart and make sure that all the stations <laughs> have libations. We could do that. Make me an ambassador. Ambassador of a track. There you go, man. But no, I, I, I like what I'm seeing. I, I like over the weekend. We had over uh, another 50 qualify close to. From the high school divisions? We had we had significant qualifiers. What I like is the future is bright. Sounds like there's a lot of stock in the in, 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 in the on the aisles, on the cabinets. It's so glaring you can't you can hardly see. You stock right up for the future. Boy in your eye. That's what I like. That's what see, that's what I like because we we have to do a better job in all our sporting disciplines are replenishing. We got a good crop and we watch that crop run to the the, the full gambit, the full spectrum before we think, well maybe we should Who's next in the pipeline? You always got to keep the pipeline full. Track and field has taken um, uh, a rebirth. The administration has taken on 
And one of the things that we, you know, everyone talks it, talk right. it, talk it, talk it. But in this administration, we said that we're going to do it. And what we planned to do from, 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 the, from the outset was to make sure that we get into the family islands. Right. And we have had an aggressive talent search and an aggressive coaching development program to ensure that we can identify not only the talent but to also nurture the flock. And that has paid off as exponentially. I think that this, Sheldon can confirm, but this would probably be the largest composition of family island team, mem team members than the entire history of perhaps the sport. So you, you feel confident, you feel fully loaded. We got the best of the best from the length and the well, breadth. I'm going to tell you, it's only just begun. Call us having 80 members on a team, even when we lost totally in 2018 or 2013. This might be the largest team that we've ever had, and as the president said, the largest collection of family out in the Grand Bahamian athletes that we've ever had on a team. And you, you spoke about the unit of the team, more than half the members of the team are first timers. Right, so you that's know, what so I mean. The future's yeah. bright. Yeah. 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 You're qualifying there. now, and you're in the ninth grade. Well, you got you for a couple of years. <laughs> mm -hmm. And not, not only, not only in, in this age group, under 17 and under 20, but we got. You want to see talent? I hear Check. down in the primary Check. schools is loaded. Down in the primary schools, but we have we have a feeder system. The under twenty three division is the future of track and field. So you say, well, what can happen next? You can see what happened next. Right. This summer, you will see a breakout of new new names and some of the world world's best athletes. You'll see. Well, so far, I'll be honest with you. You know, from when you made the announcement, you know, with your new administration. The job are going to be aggressive. I, I think Jamaica going out, I think he want to load up and, and, and see, you know, what we really can do. Because I think you being a former athlete, you, you sit there and say, man, did we really put our best team out? Did we really, did we really hit him with what we could hit him with? Mm -hmm. So I think this, this is a great opportunity, and it's a great showing on your behalf and your team's behalf that we put in the best 80 athletes that we could find out there. Yeah, but, I think once you have a mindset of putting the athletes first, then everything else just comes naturally. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, that's your main focus. That's your goal, you know, to put them at the forefront and make sure they excel. And uh, like you guys said, you know, the, the, the talent that's coming up, it makes it easy to do because, uh, you know, uh, so much. Now, I, now I feel very confident, you know. I, I can call some, I, in fact, I'm going to go out of my lane. I'm going to call some of my Jamaican friends. Run my you, you, you can call them. Yeah, call I call them. them. I can call myself. Oh, yeah. Call your Trinidadian friends. Call your Haitian friends. That's all about the Carifta. We're taking all them on. Yeah, but but I, I, I you know, my, when it comes to track, I feel my, my lot of mercy. My yardy friends, them, they like to have a lot to say. You know what I mean? So They can bring their part so I, on. I, mean, I can tell them. We bring them. I can tell them they have to hold on. Like they have to hold on. Bring their part and pan. We bring in our goat skin drum. There you go. Let's no go. Doubt. Let's and, go. And then when Trinidad figured they had the race, they just could turn it into party anyway. Because they, you know, just oh, yeah. come with our water. They could just start dancing. You can see everybody in bikini. And, <laughs> and, then, and then Haitian massive get the grill going. And then it's going to be solid. But, but that's, what the, that's the spirit of the career of the games, eh? Yes, indeed. I think that, um, so Austin Seeley, who is the, the co-founder of the game, said it best. You know, this is the one opportunity that the Caribbean has to unify itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all so independent and insular in, what, in who we are as a country. And then all of a sudden you have this thing that has grown into something beyond our understanding. In yes. fact, I just got a call from Coach Brown from the University of North Carolina saying that he wants to come down. He wants me to help find accommodations because every college wants to be here to begin the, 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 the recruiting process because we have the, bi the biggest farm in the world. Yeah, and, and that's, that's usual for Carifta. Normally, every Carifta, you have tons of college coaches coming here just to scout our talent. You know, and uh, that, that led to our uh, athletics president saying it probably best. You know, Carifta is probably the, the, the best junior athletics competition in the world. You know, just because, not only because of the talent, but because of, like, like uh, Fumiko said, the coaches who come down recruiting our talent. And just the entire atmosphere of crypto itself, the competitive atmosphere, and the future stars who were born under crypto. You and, know. and the significance of that is this was started by Lamine Diak. Mm -hmm. He's passed. He was the former president of, I, of the IWF. We now call it World Athletics. And now Lord Sebastian Coe, he does the Mr. Carifta Games. If that is the only fixture on his calendar from year He's over there. year, he'll be at the Carifta Games. And that's, I mean, a legend in his own right. Yes, indeed. He's indeed yes, a legend. When it comes to 800 meters, I mean, come on, that's one of the... Well, you, you talk 800 meters, you got to say, Lord Sebastian Coke. The two-time Olympic champion. 
And, and I think in 800 and 1500, eh? Mm -hmm. Yes. 800, that was, was, was the, we had the bottles though. But we're excited. We're excited not only because and of the. And Steve Ovet, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh, yeah, Steve Ovet, yes. They used to bottle it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he vowed to take part in our Easter fun run walk that's as well. Right. You know, yeah. let's move Bombers fun run walk. We have to promote that as well. And that's set for uh, Easter Monday morning at 6 a.m., mm -hmm. starting at uh, Arawaki. You know, so we want the entire Bombers to take part in that event. We want to just bring the entire Bombers together before the final session of Career of the Games. So we expect it to be gone, you know. Yeah. So we got the pump, we got the circumstance, and, and we got the team. I, I, I need to know who's there, man. How are we looking? Well, we, we got an 80-member team. You want me to go through all the Coach, <laughs> Break them down. Let me know some of the who's who. And, you know, some of the, obviously, you said there's a lot of first-timers, so who's yeah. something we should keep our eye on since they're first-timers? Okay, well, let me see if I can go down the list as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'm not. And under 70 girls, we got 16 girls making that team. Jemaya Nabi, she's, she's going to be terrific for us, I believe. She ended on the long jump. You have Cheyenne Demera, she's qualified in the 100 and 200 meters. Davinik Dean, she is also qualified in three events. Just three athletes on the team qualified in three events. That's Jemaya Nabi, Davinik Dean, and Kenny Moxie. Davinik is the 400, 100 meter hurdles and the 400 meter hurdles. Tamia Taylor, she's qualified in the 400 meters. Akari Roberts, she's listed for the 800 meters. Aaron Barr, the 800 meters. Madison Moss, the 100 meter hurdles. Bailey Major, the 400 meter hurdles and the triple jump. Zoe Adderley, triple jump. Grace Komalafi, high jump. Tyler Pratt, high jump, Camille Strong, Javelin, DRA Scott, she's a defending champion and also the Crifter record holder. Under 17 girls, Javelin, Kenise Scavala, Tiscuit, Tiscus, Terrell McCoy, and Daniel Nixon, both for the shot put. Under 17 boys, we have 20 athletes in that division. We have Ishmael Rule, 100 meters. Andrew Brown, he's qualified in two events, but he is listed for the 200 as well, so one to two, one to two under four. We have Caden Smith, the 200 meters. Zion Shepard, the 400 meters. Tyler Conliff and Zion Henfield, the 800 meters. Ross Martin, the 1500 meters. Christopher Williams Martin, the 1500 meters. Quentin Roll, the 110 meter hurdles and the 400 meter hurdles. Kenny Moxie Jr., the 110 meter hurdles and the long jump. Zion Davis, the 400 meter hurdle, the long and the high jump. Damien Bryce, the second, the triple jump. Eris Pratt, the high jump. LaRouche Morley, the discus. Jalen Stewart, the discus and the short put. Ruben Bain, the short put. Giovanni Bridgewater, Trent Ford, and Egan Neely are all in the relay pool. Uh, under 20 girls, you have 19 of those. You have Shatalia Dorset, the 100 meters. Amari Pratt, the 1 and 200 meters. LaCarthia Cooper, the 2 and 400 meters. Javonia Valcourt, the 400 meters. Treasure Burroughs and Jasmine Markey, both the 800 meters. You have Jasmine Markey, also the 3,000 meters. Akea Lightburn, the 1,500 meters and the 3,000 meters. Lanisha Lubin and April Adley, both the long jump and the triple jump events. You have Coy Adley, the high jump. Jishan Brown, the javelin. Vanessa Sawyer, the javelin. Kalea Jackson, the discus and the short put. Kaelin Johnson, the discus. Anae Markey, the short put. Essence Sands, heptathlon. Quincy Penn, Naya Wright, and Melvin e. Gibson are a part of the relay pool. Under 20 boys, 25, 25 athletes in our division. You have Carlos Brown, 100 meters. Adam Musgrove, 100 and 200 meters. Zachary Evans, 200 meters. Clinton, Philip Gray, 400 meters. Raywin Winder, 1,500 meters. Christopher Sintas, 1,500 meters, sorry, 5,000 meters. Tajan Robinson, 110 meter hurdles. Otto Lang, 110 meter hurdles. Shamar Bain, 400 meter hurdles. Mateo Smith, long jump. Jonathan Rogers, long and triple jumps. Laquan Ellis, triple jump. Caden Cartwright, javelin and discus. Robert Deal and Nathaniel McCarty in the short put. Brendan Vanderpool and Tyler Cash, both in the pole vault. Vado DeVoe and Riano Todd, both in the octathlon. You have Zion Campbell, Jonathan Fowler, Jeremiah Adderley, Tumani Skinner, and Berkeley Munnings as a part of the relay pool. Uh, quickly with the coaches, you have John Ingram, who is the head coach, Noel Pratt, Earl Ramming, Rashante Colebrook, Patricia Roll, Nikino Demerit, Andrew Tynes, and Alexis Roberts, all as assistant coaches. You have Ferez Cooper, who is our team leader and manager. And assistant managers, you have Sophia Higgs and Mildred Adderley. And we have three chaperones, Dazel Monroe, Quincy Gray, and Garfield Morrison. So you got a fully loaded contingent. What I'm impressed by is the absolute vast, uh, you know, variations of the disciplines that are there, man. You got a lot of distance runners. You got a lot of sprints. You got some field athletes. I like it. I like it. It's good. We're well represented. We're home. Yes, indeed. And, and the idea was to make sure that we have a full complement. Uh, oftentimes we say, you know, we, we struggle in some of the uh, non-traditional events in the, uh, by Bahamian context, and we said, no, we got to start developing these uh, middle distance program. And so we made a conscious decision to ensure that we populate everyone who would, who would be seen to be competitive. And so the fans, 
Whenever the gun goes off, you'll always see a Bahamian color on the track. And that's, 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 that's important to have. Yeah. Yes. You know, and aesthetically, that's good. And then obviously, it gives you a, a, a huge pool to choose from when you have to travel internationally. Listen, we, we want to create an atmosphere where um, we're not only pulling for Team Bahamas, but we want to be able to pull for every, uh, any outstanding performance environment of a sporting, like they say, uh, the, 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 best, the, the best pastime in, in, is baseball in the United right. States. We want the best, the, your favorite pastime to be track and field. And when you come to the track, you want to have a good time. So we're going to create an atmosphere that people want to see, feel as though they're on Bay Street. So there'll be Junkanoo and there'll be live music, there'll be color commentators, and it's just going to be a fun and festive time. We're celebrating 50 years, and 50 years not only for Carifta, but for the country. And we believe that the Carifta Games will be a unifier, and all of the people of the country, of, this, of the Bahamas, will be there, including the region. Well, let's go to the phone lines. We got a we got a caller. Let's see what they got to say today. Talking heads, Guardian Radio, ninety six point nine FM. Who's this? Uh, good afternoon to Shelton and Jamiko. How y'all doing? Doing well, good. thank Pretty you. Good. Great, wonderful, wonderful. You know, it's an awesome. Uh, I was out there two days, uh, and it is really, really awesome, tremendous to see the athletes put in their best. The only thing I'm going to say now is that nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. <laughs> I know. Who is this? That so important. Jamaica, you know what it is. <laughs> Who is this? That's what you need. Nutrition now is the key. Is that butler? If the body don't have the right nutrition, a nutrition in it, they cannot perform to it. You promised me that you were going to send I, some, I, I got some health conscious I, vendors. I got, I got you. And, and like I said, that's so important because if the body's not fueled properly, you cannot, you know, like I said, I'm... I'm 67. I can't run no 10 too, but you know, when I get out there, sometimes I'm doing six, eight miles on the beach and 600 push-ups, 600 squats. You know, during my during my run and a lot of core work and everything. Another thing is the family islands. I think now what you need to work on is try to get a decent track on each island. Andres could do it with three. Elusha could do it with two. I heard someone said that you can take old tires and make track a track out of it. And we have a lot of tires. We have plenty of cars in the country <laughs> and always changing tires. And I don't know how true that is. Maybe you can look into that and you just take the, the tires and make a, a good track, even if you do a good grass track. I, really? think, I think that that's one of a uh, pointed initiative of the government of the Bahamas, in fact, at the opening, it really wants to, to, to develop more sporting facilities throughout the family islands. And he's keenly interested on uh, putting down both synthetic and grass tracks from uh, Inagua in the south to, to Grand Bahama in the north. And so I think that that is something that this government is keenly uh, focused on. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, the introduction of that. In fact, in Cat Island, as we speak, um, I visited a facility where they're going to have a, a wonderful complex that in includes a basketball court, uh, an, an all-weather track, and also a baseball facility and tennis courts, and so and a, and a weight room facility. This is the kind of thing that will stimulate the interest of sport from one island to the other, thereby making the entire universe of track and field and sports uh, in, the, in, in the wider uh, ecosystem a lot a, a lot more present in these islands. We still got a quarter. He's gone. All right, but quarter. Yeah, we, they they uh, uh, old tires and recycled tires since two thousand and seven to make you know running tracks and in synthetic surfaces and so on and so forth. So within the authority. Eh? No, I just but, but to make That's a good idea. We got plenty of tires, man. Yeah, man. But Butler, you got more entrepreneurial. You, you got to bring some of that yam with Jamaican, with, with the Jamaicans that I'm eating, eh? No, right, Butler been talking about, about veggie products uh, from Monday, and then last week he was on it too. So I, obviously, you know, he's on to something. I, I'm sure there'll be a bevy of vendors out there with, with with great, awesome eats and treats. Well, you know, I mean, what is awesome eats and treats? We like greasy food. But but he the point the point remains we got to try to uh, p promote healthier living. We need we need to have, yeah. we need to have a cornucopia of it. That's yeah, what man. you need to have. Yeah, man. For a foodie but, like me, I can go the whole gambit. But the, what what I'm happy about is that this will be there will be a cultural village at the the Griffith Games, 
which uh, will be a representation of countries all throughout the Caribbean serving different cuisine and um, food products. So I'm excited about that. I think it's another unifier. Food is a unifier. And much like the culture of um, the, the, the Bahamas Food Festival, that on an occasion like this. Yeah, with the cultural village, uh, you know, we normally have food vendors on the western grand side of the stadium. This is the first time I've seen a setup on the eastern grand stand of the stadium. So it's going to be, you know, saving, you know, everybody from both sides. You know, so I like it. I, I had a chance to visit out there, you know, last week. And the setup is good. And the food is already out there. The food is good. So, you know. And then I've got tents and, and tables. And they are already ready to go. Yep, selling ready to go. fried fish and conch salad out there already. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's really uh, it, the momentum. You can feel the momentum building uh, around the facility. Mm -hmm. And as far as um, ticket sales go? Hey, listen, you know, I, I, I can turn my phone off. Everyone asking me, y'all got any Just more tickets? Go, man. Y'all got any more left? I say, go to the sports center and buy what's left. Gold tickets, gone. VIP tickets, gone. Oh, I want a silver ticket. But if you don't buy no silver ticket, they're going to be gone too. So make sure, buy your tickets and buy your tickets now. Because we want the Bahamians in the stands because the Jamaicans then buy their block, the Trinidadians then buy their block, and we can't get left out. So Bahamians, go out there and buy your tickets today. You say block? Blocks of tickets. Just a little note on They're still available online? Yeah, you can buy tickets online. Yeah, that's a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. online at uh, www.careerafter50.com. And uh, the prices? Um, oh, boy. The daily rate starts at $5. Start, start at silver because girl gone and VIP gone. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I think so. The daily rate starts from $5 and they go up as high as $50 for the VIP section. Yeah. All right. So you can get a three-day pass for up to $130 yeah, okay. for the VIP section. And that makes sense. Get, and, get and the gold pass pass. is the $70. Yes. A, a, a season ticket. Yeah, so depending on what section you sit in, you can get you know, a single-day pass or a three-day pass or you know, very good prices. But I, I believe that because the, the facility is not a very large facility, anywhere in, the, anywhere in the stadium, you'll get good seats and really have a great time. Bring your friends along. And, and bring your pots and pans and your goat skin drums. Well, I appreciate you guys stopping by. And, and like I said, you know, we'll try to get it out there as much as we can before the event. But we're excited for it. We're looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a big part of the 50th. You guys have done an awesome job fielding this team, though. I commend you on that. Yeah, one more note I want to mention. Uh, we have a float parade set up for this Thursday. A float parade and pep rally set up for this Thursday. The LLC is doing it. It's starting at 4 o'clock over there on the Eastern Grandstand at the stadium. Uh, they're going to have a motorcade uh, for a pep rally. What time is that? It starts at 4 o'clock. So, so the pep four rally, yeah, the pep rally will get on real like around 6. All right, cool. You know. And, the, and the, the, the girl down by the track, she said, tell Naughty come to the walkathon. The, the, um, let's move Bahamas. But tell them don't bring no long pants. They will see them long. They will see them legs. <laughs> no, 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 so um, if you got that golf cart division, I'll wear shorts. If you got the golf mm. cart division, you know, you yeah. know, get me riding on the golf cart. I, I'll wear some. I'll wear some shorts. We, we look forward. But to them having Jordan, you. Jordan, that's Kobe as shorts, not them tight them LeBron yeah. shorts. No, we look forward to you coming, and we look forward to the entire um, Guardian team coming. We'll be out there, man, in full yeah. support, man, and, and and it's definitely a good look. Like I said, looking forward to see this contingent uh, participate. Looking forward to talking smack to my Jamaican and Trinidadian compadres. Letting you all know, you know, there's hard things just go around. See you all next year. Don't think about this one. Can't come in for no good. This one over. All right, we'll get to the break, man, but I really appreciate you all. And Sheldon, thanks a lot. Um, Anytime, and man. keep us up to date. Dramico, always we'll good do. to see you, man. And uh, be safe, and we'll talk soon. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right, let's get to the first break. Flip side of the break. Yep. We'll kick it uh, international. We'll talk Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, all coming up on Who's In and Who's Out, brought to you by Tropical Gyros right after this break. And the NASA Guardian is partnering with the Easter Bunny to give something special to you. Would you like to give your child an Easter basket filled to the brim with chocolate bunnies, surprise eggs, gift certificates, and more? Then you should enter your child into the NASA Guardian's Easter Coloring Contest. There are three different categories. 
5 to 6, 7 to 9, and 10 to 13. Deadline for entry is Monday, April 3rd at 4 p.m. Purchase your copy of the Nassau Guardian to get your Easter coloring contest sign-up form. I'll let your children color away and win one of three baskets filled to the brim with Easter goodies from the Nassau Guardian. The Nassau Guardian's Easter coloring contest. For more information, call 302-2370. Well done, Easter bunnies. Good job. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Vaccines protect those we love the most, our children and our grandchildren. I vaccinated my children to protect them. Getting your child immunized can protect them against diseases like polio, measles, whooping cough, and others. So protect your child today by getting them immunized. My grandchildren are vaccinated. You should do the same. Vaccinate your children and your grandchildren and make sure they are safe. Take advantage of the National Vaccination Catch-Up Campaign, March 25th to April 6th. Visit your nearest clinic weekdays between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. On Saturday, March 25th, visit us at, and on Saturday, April 1st, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be at the Mall at Marathon. COVID-19 vaccines are also available at all locations. This message is brought to you by Paco WHO, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and USAID. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and you set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number, they see you as a part of family. I'm going over my life. It's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. George, shoes and accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy stuff. We cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carries small all home appliances. So come on in today at John's, where we put fashion at your feet. The Tuesday, March 28th edition of Talking Heads continues right now. And we're up into the 5 o'clock hour, and uh, we kind of flip things up a little bit. So I'm going to get uh, to, at uh, Today in Sports History going for you right now. And don't forget, um, news Magic Johnson attempting to buy it. Anyway, we got... Uh, Rich Eisen and uh, Robert Griffin III taking us home on the final 10 today. Uh, Robert Griffin III, all signs point to collusion in the Mar Jackson's free agency. And uh, that has been the whisper. That has been the talk. But we're going to really, you know, look at it in depth now today. Because, you know, when Rich Eisen gets to talking about it, you know, that's going to be the next hot topic of conversation. Simply because you no longer can skirt the issue. Here we are. It seems like uh, he's being punished for not having an agent. Also, the league trying to take advantage of the situation by, by putting a curb to, to the guaranteed money on these ludicrous, uh, you know, astronomical contracts. Not saying these players aren't worth it, but at the end of the day, there's got to be some sort of, you know, parameters to it. Because, you know, eventually that could be bad for the league. But I digress. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, before we get to all of that, let me get up into today in sports history. Brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. Don't forget, every Wednesday, every Friday, happy hour at Naughty Johnny's, 5 to 7 p.m. You definitely want to check them out on that. 
And don't forget, Monday through Friday, great for lunch and dinner. On the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, great for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Breakfast starting at 9 a.m. All right, today is Tuesday, March 28th. And on this day, 1945, Maurice the Rocket Richard of the Montreal Canadiens became the first NHL player to score 50 goals in the season. Richard scored 50 goals in 50 games. 1963, Sonny Werblin announced that the New York Titans of the American Football League was changing its name to the New York Jets in the NFL. 1990, Jesse Owens received the Congressional Gold Medal of U.S. President George Bush from U.S. Med- uh, President George Bush. 1999, in Cuba, the Orioles beat the Cuban national team 3-2. It was the first time since the 1950s that a U.S. team had played in Cuba. Player Dexter Manley was sentenced to two years in jail for evidence tampering. He'd been convicted for attempting to swallow cocaine he was carrying and then failed to meet with his probation officer. 2002, Greco-Roman wrestler Rulon Gardner had the middle toe on his right foot amputated due to frostbite. He had been stranded overnight in Wyoming on February 14th. 2002, Eric Carnes of the New York Islanders was suspended by the NHL for two games. The previous night, Carnes had punched Reddick Bonk, Ottawa Senators, in the back of the head. Quote of the day, skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. Wayne Gretzky. I think that worked out for the great one, too. Yes, indeed. Now, that's a wrap on today in sports history. All brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnnies. All right, let's look at uh, some of the big headlines from today. Major League Baseball cranking things up. Opening days on Thursday. Should be some uh, interesting games. Interesting games. All right. We got uh, the Ravens meeting with Odell Beckham Jr. Yep. That's the latest swirl out of the NFL. And that makes sense. But why are you meeting with, with the Ravens if, okay, why are you meeting with the Ravens if they don't have a quarterback? Very interesting. Could they possibly be trying to bring Lamar back? Could this all be posturing? Keep an eye out for Peter. We got Peter chimed in yet? I know Pearlie is uh, out and about these last couple of days, but he will be holding it down for me Thursday and Friday. Never know I might be at one of them major little... Um... When you keep an eye on things, like I said, OBJ, big uh, news coming out of, of the NFL today. That, that's the latest in, in the free agent uh, swirlings. He's meeting with the Ravens. They plan to talk uh, the wide receiver joining the team. Free agent wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. is planning to meet with representatives from the Ravens, according to CBS Sports' Josina Anderson. The news comes amid uh, continued uncertainty regarding the future of Lamar Jackson. The star quarterback confirmed Monday has requested a trade from the Ravens before free agency opened. Jackson remains in Baltimore, and the team seems to be ready to pencil, in, to pencil him in for the 2023 season if a trade doesn't materialize. Head coach John Harbaugh told the NFL Network Tom Pelissero he believes the 2019 MVP will be fully committed if that situation comes to pass. The Ravens plan on appeasing their starting quarterback and want to continue building around him. Some noted how, uh, how, how they haven't exactly gone above and beyond this offseason. And they haven't. Some people walk. They haven't restocked. They haven't retooled. Who knows what it's going to be in the draft. And the only thing is that they signed Nelson Aguilar. That was it. That's the full extent. They signed Aguilar, a speedster. Because that doesn't really, you know, Nelson Aguilar, he might catch a long ball or two, but I mean, really, that don't strike the fear in the heart of nobody right there. Defensive coordinators aren't losing sleep. The Nelson Aguilar is in Baltimore. Now, from Baltimore's perspective, their interest in Beckham could be uh, independent of what happens with Jackson. They might just want him as a piece. And the team could use another wideout regardless who's lining up at quarterback. So he might be their guy. Now, for Beckham, on the other hand, Whether Jackson stays or not could have a big impact on his desire to sign with the Ravens if he does. Just look at a future without Lamar Jackson. The alternatives are uh, elevating Tyler Huntley, the backup, not a starter. Or Coleman was left to the free agent market 
which is Teddy Bridgewater, Carson Wentz, and Matt Ryan, or turn into an unproven rookie that they get in the draft. None of those options sound appealing to me if I'm Odell Beckham Jr. So there's a lot of posturing going on. It could work out. I think OBJ ends up in Baltimore if Lamar Jackson remains in Baltimore. Okay? So we'll see. Now this is some 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 news that uh, really don't really want me to uh, address because I don't want to skip um Apparently, Zeke could be returning to the Cowboys. Mike McCarthy, head coach, says potential Ezekiel Elliott reunion as a possibility. He sees it as a possibility. I think you always keep that door open. I guess you're in number 15, second go around, AZ, because 21 done gone. So we'll see. Now, is, is, is McCarthy being diplomatic, or is he actually sincere with that? Um, the NFL made an announcement. Players can now wear zero. On Tuesday, the league's owners approved the proposal to allow players to wear jersey number zero. According to NFL Network's Tom Palacero, I would never wear zero. I don't wear zero, nothing. Zero, zilch, come on, man. And now punters and place kickers can now wear numbers 0, 49, between 0 and 49 and 90 and 99. So you got to have a kicker rock in 99 now. All about expression in the NFL these days. And I think Calvin Ridley's going to be the first player to wear zero. Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver is going to wear zero. All right, we'll see how that works out. Always something with the NFL. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's check out the uh, NBA. Got some news coming out of the NBA. Apparently, uh, Kevin Durant returning tonight from an ankle injury for the Suns against the Timberwolves. So we'll see if that uh, sparks a difference in the Suns. Because obviously, you know, they've been, they've been down without him. So we'll see um, how it goes. Now, let me check in with uh, ESPN. And uh, they just chimed in uh, with the latest on Kevin Durant. So I'm going to get to that right now real quick so you can uh, have a listen to that. Mr. Producer. If you get a chance, um, let's go to that clip from ESPN. Kevin Durant returns tonight against uh, the Timberwolves. And I think this is a move now that uh, had to come. Because if you look at the standings, you got some, an opportunity to get Durant back, but at the same time, make up some ground. Because some people were nipping at your heels. They're out 40 and 35. 11 games back, but you got the Clippers at 40 and 36, and the Timberwolves at 39 and 37, very close within striking distance to hop into that fourth spot. So it makes sense that Durant gets back. If he's ready to go, he should be back in that lineup. So let's uh, go to ESPN right now and uh, check out the, the latest on the return of Kevin Durant, uh, apparently returning to the lineup tonight against the Timberwolves for the Suns. Welcome back to NBA Today. Kevin Durant has missed the last 10 games, but ESPN is reporting that he will return mm. tomorrow night. So on Wednesday, we will be seeing Kevin Durant. Zach Lowe, we know that they have, what, seven games together before the playoffs. They do have one back-to-back -back remaining, so seven total games in the regular season. What's the biggest question mark that you want answered with Kevin Durant returning to the lineup on Wednesday? I got no questions about Kevin Durant fitting in. I just want to see he's healthy. Beyond that, it's the rest of the rotation around their big four. Who nails down the fifth starting spot? What's the bench rotation? Can they get enough shooting and defense from their last spot? And can they hold on to that four seed? Their margin is getting a little thin, but Devin Booker has propped them up lately. But look, this team could be, I think they probably should be the favorite in the West with Kevin Durant healthy. Let's just see how it looks now and see if they can get rolling. But one main ingredient has got to be feeding DeAndre Ayton. Mm. If that doesn't happen, not going to be able to do it. <laughs> you got to find a way to keep the young fella happy. He's going to set screens. 
He's going to rebound. You want him to change shots? You want him to block shots? You got to get a young fellow the ball and let him get some buckets. Well, because he's the one guy that is dependent on others, and that's the issue mm. with this team. Kevin Durant can score on anybody, anytime, right. any team. He will fit in. Chris Paul is the greatest floor general we've seen of this generation. Devin Booker has been elite since he came into this league. All three of them can go get it when they need it. He is the one person that needs to be filled. And the reason why that that is, that is important is because he is the anchor of your defense and your rebound. You have no interior presence. You have nothing. So if you don't feed him consistently, like any other human being that's an elite player, their energy starts to drop. And when his energy starts to drop, their team goes from an A plus to a to a B minus team, and that's not going to get it done. Yeah, and feeding off of that, I wonder what Kevin Durant, that defends them. Mm. We all know DA should be able to go out there and get you 12 to 15 rebounds a night on a great night. And on an off night, maybe it's like a smaller production offensively, but he's got to be consistent anchoring down that defense. But on the perimeter, I know that Devin Booker has improved. You know, Chris Paul is one of the toughest guys, toughest nails on the floor. You think about defensively, Kevin Durant has really improved in that aspect because I think his offense is so good you forget that he's switchable he goes for blocks so if KD is locked in defensively this team really has a shot because defense is the biggest predicator is it predictor predicate yeah predictor of success when it comes to playoff basketball I don't know I mean if they stay healthy and you look at it the Suns have an awesome foursome all right Let, let's be honest you look at that core four of the of, of the Suns okay when you look at it that's a, a really strong core, all right? Durant, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and DeAndre Ayton are very on DeAndre Ayton, and it's, it's key. They have to get him involved. They have to get him to basketball. Booker, Paul, KD can all create their own shot. They're all ball dominant. Ayton deserves to get the ball kicked into him, especially with a mismatch, but also get him into the offense. If you want him to do the dirty work, the rebounding, the block shots, the defense, the rim protection... And you got to give him the rock as well. But I think if that four could stay together, they'd do very well. They were 3-0 with Durant in the lineup. 4-6 and six without him in the 10 games that he missed. But like I say, if that core four is playing, and then you add those bench pieces in, Phoenix, who's 40 and 35, could close out winning some games and end up as a higher seed, obviously, but be a very hard out in a seven-game series. Absolutely. So, we'll see where this all pans out. Durant returns tomorrow night against the Timberwolves. And we'll see how the Suns look. Damian, Dillard, Damian Lillard sorry, shut down for the rest of the season due to a calf injury. This is according to uh, Shams Sharina of the stadium and the athletic. Um, I quoted this in, I'm told the Blazers star Damian Lillard has essentially been shut down for the remainder of the season. He's been dealing with a calf injury, but I believe this has more to do with the team being four and a half games out of the playoff spot with eight games to go. There's simply no reason to continue to push for what is now obviously a lost cause. And now the Blazers are in a one and nine slide that, that has dropped them to 32 and 43 and five games outside the play-in tournament picture with seven games remaining. They're in 13th in the Western Conference. And Lillard for the season has averaged 32.2 points, 7.3 assists, and 4.8 rebounds per game. They need to get Dame out of Portland, man. Dame is a loyal soldier, but they got to get him out of Portland. Get him some purple and gold. Get him in L.A. Yeah. Bradley Veal under a police investigation for altercation with fans. Washington Wizards star Bradley Beal is being investigated by police in relation to to his involvement in a reported confrontation with fans. Now, where did, you know, where, where did this happen? Where did this come from? Are, are we good, Mr. Producer? Or did this just get loud for a reason? <laughs> anyway, we'll keep an eye on Bradley Beal, all right, and see where that pans out. But apparently, he's been uh, under investigation is under investigation after a confrontation with fans last week. This, uh, as per TMZ Sports, the Orlando Police Department is investigating a complaint filed about 24 hours after the Wizards' 122-112 loss to the Magic on March 22nd. TMZ noted the altercation began when Beal was walking to the locker room or tunnel, and a fan yelled to him, 
You F me out of 1300, you so and so. Peel then turned, walked toward the fans, and appeared to knock the hat off of one of the guys in response to the heckle. This, uh, according to TMZ. Beal and the fans uh, then joined back and forth, but Beal calling the comment disrespectful. So we'll see where it goes from there. But um, we'll get to the second break. And on the flip side of the break, we got Rich Eisen. And of course, you know, he'll be taking us home. Also uh, chiming in with Rich Eisen today, Robert Griffin III, whether is this collusion against Lamar Jackson or not. We talked about it last week, and the plot thickens and continues this week. The more things they change, the more they stay the same in Baltimore. So if they keep Lamar, look for OBJ to end up in Baltimore. If they don't, he could end up elsewhere. All of that's coming up on the flip side of the break. Good stuff to everybody who chimed in today. And we will see you tomorrow right here on Talking Heads. And be good, Bahamas. And if you can't be good, be good at it. Experience the pure deliciousness of Dunkin's Glazed Donut Breakfast Sandwich. This sweet and savory breakfast treat stacks a fluffy egg and smoked bacon sandwiched inside a split plastic Dunkin' Glazed Donut. Make it a combo with lightly seasoned hash browns and your favorite freshly brewed Dunkin' Coffee. Stop by your favorite Dunkin' today and take breakfast to a fun and tasty donut breakfast sandwich. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. People, what you thinking? We want something different. Uh-huh. People, what you wanting? We want up the government. I can tell them no more slunkin'. We want the function. I can tell them no more jokes. <laughs> We want local government. We want local government. Share the love. We want local government. We are called for local government. Sign the petition and find out more information at risebahamas.net. Play with Island Games. We making dreams come true. Play with Island Games. We paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market. You get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games. we put in Bahamian's voice. Guaranteed to play Island Games. We like them mother jokers. We've been here from the start. From the bike to computer. Island Games. We can make your dreams come true. We playing with Island Games. Every Thursday until April 6th between 5 and 6 p.m. is Come Gold With Us Thursdays. Follow us and like our Facebook page, 50th Carifta 2023. Then keep a lookout for our team and get a chance to win a golden ticket and many, many more giveaways for the 50th Carifta Games 2023. For more details, email info at carifta50.com or call 808-GOLD. Um, you were very vocal when Lamar got his um, non-exclusive franchise tag tender placed in front of him and a bunch of teams when responding to requests uh, for an answer immediately said, we're not interested in Lamar. He started throwing uh, quite a bit of collusion. I think there's collusion going on right now to keep Lamar Jackson from an offer sheet being signed, do you think? Rich, I don't think there's collusion from him signing an offer sheet. I think what Jim Ursay said about guaranteed contracts and how he has looked at it in the MLB and the NBA and how it just hasn't been good for business. I think the universal thought process amongst all of the NFL owners. So for all these teams to say, you know, we'll go get Jimmy G, we'll go get Deshaun Watson, we'll go, we would pay Joe Burrow all of this money and all of those guys have all been injured in their careers. And it's never prevented a team from going out and getting them. So I truly believe that this Lamar Jackson thing isn't that teams don't want him as a player. It's not that they don't think he's a phenomenal talent. Heck, the Washington Commanders GM, uh, Martin Mayhew, even came out and said, oh, he's a special guy, but we're not interested. Ron Rivera said, we didn't even look into it. If that doesn't sound like collusion or like a, a conservative effort to not even give a guy an opportunity who is raging against the machine to sign an offer sheet, I don't know what is. And as you know, I've been very vocal about it, and, and I'm more than willing to continue to dive into it with you. So, yeah, no, absolutely, because, it, it, you know, I, I think Washington should do it. Um, but I'm also, you know, um, 
you know, not privy to any of their conversations where, you know, maybe after Carson Wentz and everything else that they tried, they're like, we, we did, well, why, why can't they just really dig Sam Howell, you know, and go in that direction and then we'll find out later on what a silly move that was as Lamar finally does wind up on another team and is hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. And the same thing with Desmond, you know, Ritter in Atlanta. We had uh, Thomas Dimitrov on. I'm like, walk me through wh why they're not. And he's like, well, they just got out of cap hell that he kind of <laughs> put them in. And he said, we'll have a conversation later on as to the reasons why he did what he did when he was GM there. But they finally just got out of it. They drafted the kid. They loved the kid. And they're going, they, they don't want to switch up. They'd rather put their money in a safety or money in here. And then I, I think you also know that there's a conversation around the league about you know, Lamar not finishing the last two years and you put it all together and and two first round picks and uh, a ton of money guaranteed to somebody that you would be just meeting right now uh, dropped in your lap because you didn't even think it would be possible that you could sign him. They thought it would just a franchise tag full on coming your way. That might lead to a lot of these situations. Robert. Yeah, I mean, I think when you when you piece it all together, you can find reasons as to why or try to justify why teams aren't going after Lamar Jackson. But at the end of the day, common sense prevails. It makes zero sense for a team to come out and say, you know what, we, we're thinking about, you know, using a first round pick to go get an unproven quarterback in the draft instead of using two first rounders to go get a proven quarterback than Lamar Jackson, who's a unanimous MVP and 26 years old. So, that, that's where I come from, and, and obviously I've mentioned that I think Lamar's fighting the machine that is the NFL, whether that's NFL agents, NFL GMs and owners, along with NFL insiders. But it, it really is because the, the quarterback position, Rich, is a sacred position, right? When you get that contract, uh, uh, agent negotiating a contract for a quarterback can help him take care of every single one of his other clients on just that one quarterback contract say $250 million guaranteed, 1% of that would be $2.5 million. They're, they're set. They can go for the next five, six years and take care of 20 other uh, uh, clients because of that one quarterback. So when you take that away from them and you're a guy like Lamar Jackson and you're trying to do it with to the NFL insiders, you're affecting everybody's bottom line. Now, I'm not saying that teams don't want to win football games and, and they're not going to go after Lamar because he's doing that by himself. What I'm saying is it doesn't make any sense. We can put up all the names of guys that have missed games over the past couple seasons and how much money they got paid. And you're telling me they're not even willing to think about going and talking to Lamar Jackson. They don't even know what Lamar Jackson wants because they haven't even picked up the phone to call him and talk about an offer potentially. Well, the problem with that too is, and again, uh, I, I want you to understand, I think some teams should go run the risk here and do it, whatever risk that may be. And I, I pegged Washington Atlanta and Indianapolis because they also don't have quarterbacks in situations that they've already had there uh, with all due respect to the second year players and Ritter and, and Howell. Cause you know, if you sign this guy to an offer sheet, whatever quarterbacks there would be like, what gives like, what are you talking about? Like, wh wh what do you mean? I thought this was my gig. They don't have those issues. So, um, so uh, what I'm, what I'm pushing back here on the agent front is is if you want to get this highly complicated deal done, which obviously Lamar wants, and he wants to get the the money that he thinks he deserves, and he wants to get the the um, the security that he deserves, and the spot where there are you know receivers that he feels he deserves, <laughs> right? right. The, the, if he wants that to get done, you're going to have to convince somebody to stroke you the check, and you're going to have to convince a coach to do it, right? And, sure. and 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 with all due respect, if you're a general manager and you find out Ken Francis is on the phone for Lamar Jackson, you're like, who? Or you're Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft comes up to you and says, hey, Meek Mill says Lamar wants to come here. Don't you think there's a better front on that business front? Robert? Yeah, Rich, I, I think the question you're asking is should Lamar have an agent? And, or, and I would repurpose the question and say, is he being hurt by not having an agent? I think he is right now because he's not able to fight these types of battles. Right. Agents don't just represent players. These agencies represent players. They represent coaches. And when we talk about free agency and the legal tampering period, 
You know this, Rich. Yeah. Agents are always tampering, okay? They're constantly negotiating for their players throughout seasons, talking to coaches, and that's where Lamar doesn't have that connection because they actually have to call him. And, and what I would say on Lamar's front is they're not even picking up the phone. So for Robert Kraft to say Meek Mill is saying this or there's the stuff about Ken Francis, which Lamar has already come out and says the guy's not negotiating for him, uh, you know, to correct that narrative, my problem is they're not even picking up the phone. 